Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're going to be taking a look at what we consider to be the most exciting games coming in the coming month to the Nintendo Switch. And that coming month being... As always, this is not an exhaustive list of every game coming to the Switch. That would be mad. Also, there'll be games announced and revealed after this video goes out, because that's how things work. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. Starting things off on the 3rd of February, we have Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments, which is a slight mouthful to say. Now, I had a Sherlock Holmes game on the 360 back in the day. I believe it was Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper, and it was... It was a bit pants. So I wasn't like super thrilled about this game coming to Switch or anything, but then I, I saw a trailer because, you know, I saw it was coming soon. I thought I'd give it a chance. And you know what? It actually looks really bloody good. Uh, I am surprised because it's by the same people that did the uh, the Jack the Ripper one that I wasn't so keen on. Reviews are really solid. It looks like it's going to be one of those games that is not necessarily going to be for everyone. But, you know, you could argue the same about nearly any game, so it's not really saying anything. I'm excited. I really like Sherlock Holmes as a character and the whole sort of lore around him. I know he's a fictional character, but still, I think it could be good. We'll have to wait and see, but other people have said that it's pretty bloody excellent, and who am I to argue with other people? Then on the 8th of February, we have Oli Oli World, which may have passed some of you by because they, they had really bad timing. They re the, the preview embargo for Oli Oli World was the day that Microsoft bought Activision Blizzard, which... They couldn't possibly have known, but oh dear. I was a big fan of the original Oli Oli when it first came out way back in the space year of I can't remember. And I mean, just look at this. This is one of the most, I mean, the art style isn't like super out there or super artsy or anything like that, but it's so appealing to just look at. And that's a big blooming deal. If something's just nice to look at, it's pleasing and to boot, and much more importantly, the gameplay looks incredibly solid as well. It's been knocking around for a long time and I'm really pleased it's fine finally, finally coming out. But yeah, if you're looking at this and it looks like something you might be interested in, then I can be pretty confident you're going to have a good time with this. Then on the 10th of February, we have Ocean's Heart. And if you're looking at this and thinking that looks a bit Zelda-y, <laughs> me too. There's been a bit of a sort of resurgence of top-down adventure, let's not, let's not beat around the bush, Zelda-like games out there recently, or at least in the past sort of three, four, five years. And that is no bad thing. Thing. And this one is apparently a blinking gooden. It's been out on other platforms for a while now, and loads of people seem to think it's really, really good. Which, admittedly, when I first saw this, it didn't scream like that it was anything particularly special at first, just from looking at the trailer. But I'm not so proud as to think that my initial impression is the right one. And if everyone else says that it's really blooming good, then I'm inclined to believe them. I know we've had Link's Awakening and Link Between Worlds not that long ago. I mean, it, it probably was a long time ago. I, I, oh god, yeah, it was, wasn't it? So that explains why there's a top-down Zelda-shaped hole in my heart at the moment. And this looks like it could hopefully fill it, even if only temporarily. Then on the 10th of February, we have Eglia Rebirth, or as I've written in my notes, <laughs> Eglia Rebirth. <laughs> if the art style looks at all familiar to you, then there's probably a good reason for that, because this game was designed by the artists of the Secret of Mana series. This RPG was originally released on smart devices, and it was uh, kind of maligned for having all this sort of strange online connectivity, and it was absolutely required. But this version, it doesn't require any of that. And admittedly, there was an offline version released as well on smart devices, but by that point, I think the damage had been done. But now this RPG gets a chance to shine on Nintendo Switch in arguably the form it should always been released in, but who am I to judge? Classic old school RPGs like this are always very welcome on Switch, and this looks like it's gonna be a good one. Also, also on the 10th of February, we have Grapple Dog, which is a, well, you can probably tell it's a 2D platformer that gives me slight bionic commando vibes but like without all the really slow pace of the old one i don't know if that was just me but i never got along with that this seems to fix that problem entirely it just looks like this wonderful free-flowing fun fun to move around in more importantly kind of platformer and that for me that is so important i mean it's not necessary for a game to have fun movement but fun movement is just 
fun. The art style's clean. I'm not so sure about some of the boxiness of it, but you know, that's a very minor thing. At the end of the day, it's the mechanics that are most important, and the mechanics look very, very solid. I'm looking forward to this one. Next up on the 14th of February, we have Infernax, and I mean, just from the visuals alone, I'm kind of already sold on this, you know, the sort of, the sort of pseudo retro look where it's very chunky and pixelated, but at the same time not completely limited to the original, like, NES hardware's limitations. Yeah, I'm kind of all over that. This, if you can't tell, is a side-scrolling RPG, but it's an action RPG, and yeah, I'm get I sort of feel it looks a bit Castlevania as well. The combat looks slick, it promises multiple endings depending on choices that you make. I'm not expecting anything like super drastic in terms of like the choices you make, but at the same time, I always welcome that sort of thing, you know, replayability and different things happening. That's the sort of thing that I really enjoy. As always, the proof of the pudding will be in the eating, but at the moment, I, I'm really hopeful for this. I think it looks bloody good. On the 17th of February, we have Assassin's Creed the Ezio Collection. They've they've been like drip feeding Assassin's Creed games <laughs> on the Switch for some time now, and I, I I'm not complaining. Assassin's Creed One was good. It was really good, but Assassin's Creed Two was just absolutely spectacular. I love that game to death. And if you saw the recent video we did where we talked about our gaming regrets, I got Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and got a big slap in the face of disappointment. This pack contains the all important Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and Assassin's Creed Revelations, and I have no idea if that's any good because Brotherhood burnt me. But to be honest with you, if you've never played Assassin's Creed 2, this is, it, it would probably be worth it just for that game alone. Like, that game was like out of this world for the time. It also has all the single player DLC packs for the games, as well as two short films. Ooh, no idea what those are or whether they're any good. But yeah, Assassin's Creed 2 should be worth it on its own, as long as maybe you get it on a bit of a discount. Or maybe you like the other two games, in which case, more power to you. Then on the 22nd of February, we have Soul Cresta, which is the follow-up to two old arcade games. And when I mean old, I mean arse old. Moon Cresta, which released in 1980, and Terra Cresta, which released in 1985. So it's been a while. This is a bullet hell game where you control three ships simultaneously simultaneously, and you use different docking and formation procedures in order to do different gubbins in order to avoid all the bullet hell that's coming towards you. I really enjoy these kinds of games. They never hold my attention for a huge amount of time, but whenever I do play them, I am just, I'm having an incredible time. And this really looks like it's taking the same DNA from the past, but ramping it up to be a little bit more modern, a little bit more well-rounded overall, and taking advantage of more recent technology, but without losing what made the originals the originals. It's being made by Platinum Games, who also made Bayonetta, and they know how to do crazy stuff, so I've got every confidence in this one. And finally, on the 28th of February, we have 100 Days Winemaking Simulator, which I played ages ago, like years ago at an event, and it was, I, I'm not gonna lie, it was mainly the winemaking part that caught my attention. I'm something of a brewer myself. This is kind of a management sim come puzzle game type of thing. It's kind of difficult to sort of put into a neat little box. Unlike wine, you essentially create and maintain your own vineyard and you make wine, you sell it, you give it special name and everything. And there's just something very relaxing and simple about this style of game that really sings to me. And it's about wine! Given the fact that I really enjoy making beer, management sims, and will never actually own my own vineyard, this is ticking a lot of boxes for me. Super excited to see it making the Switch. <laughs> I haven't used that one in a while. And if you like this kind of game, I imagine you're going to have a damn good time with this one. Also, it's about wine. And there you have it. Those are the most exciting games that we believe are coming to the Nintendo Switch in the coming month that we're aware of. Did we miss something from the list that you're super excited about? Then let us know what that is in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you boil down that subscribe button, add some yeast, put it in a place of consistent temperature, and see what happens. And be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. It's coming out nicely. The carbonation's done well.
This is the worst part of the job. I now have beer for lunch. <laughs>